Hello world! Welcome to another episode of Shred Your Halo with Jenna and Adele! Yay! As we are quarantining together, we thought we would... It's going to be such a cliche video and hopefully not cliche at the same time because we've been having a lot of insight, we've been having a lot of our own personal experiences and joint experiences that has made the quarantine work enormously well for the both of us. So hopefully during this chat, uh, during the course of this chat, while we tell you of our experiences, uh, you'd be able to pick the things that could work for you and maybe replicate it in your life. So that's the hope for this video. Right, so diving right in. Jonna, what have you learned during the quarantine so far? It's been a time of a lot of self-reflection and I have learned that I like my company and I will continue working towards building a relationship with myself which which will last a lifetime. See that's a that's you know, sorry to interrupt, but that is that that is like everybody says that. What do you do to build a relationship okay. with yourself? Um, so there are a few things that I do. Uh, first thing is I get my body moving because I used to be so disconnected from my own body. And I remember there was this one time I decided to meditate and I thought I was sitting upside down. When I was on my bed like that, I thought my entire body was upside down. And then I realized I need to connect with my body. So I've been, I've been practicing yoga and it is something that gives me a lot of joy because I understand what my body needs in that moment. So that's something that I'm doing. And I don't meditate very often. I, I meditate for like maybe 10 minutes a day. And that's giving me a little bit more space where I can just close my eyes and I can I can just let that space remain instead of trying to crowd it with a lot of things. How do you meditate, Jana? I focus on my breathing, focus on the inhale and exhale. And there are many times I notice that my mind starts to wander. Mm -hmm. So I start focusing on my mind, on my thoughts. And then after a few moments of doing that, I notice that it's beginning to drop a little bit. So it creates a little bit more space in my head where there's not anything except me just observing that space. So I sometimes need to switch between focusing on my breathing and focusing on my mind because every time uh, my mind goes off to some other place or where I feel extremely crowded in my head, I need to understand, but more than understand, uh, I need to observe why that's happening. So staying in that space is giving me a little bit more insight into what I want to do for myself and how I can develop a relationship, de develop a relationship with myself. Um, other than this, I I like crafting, which is something that I've just come across very recently, and I realized that I like stationery a lot. And I like colorful Look, papers. Don't lie. So she likes stationery all her life. The quarantine didn't make her fall in love with stationery. No, this no, is no, no, like, no. oh, I just discovered. Oh, no, I discovered that. I like crafting recently. Okay. Yes. But I've always loved stationery. I I think I used to hoard stationery as a kid, and I gave away a lot of stuff. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I've, I've recently discovered that I like crafting and I've been making a couple of crafts a week. Not a couple of crafts a week, I think one craft per week. And I hope to be able to make more crafts more often and that gives me a lot of joy. So I think these are a few things I'm able to see that is helping me build a better relationship. Plus I, I love reading. I've gotten back to reading uh, more often now than I used to. And I'm, I'm trying to pick up books that I think I will enjoy. And if there are certain books that I feel, I, there, there were a couple of books I stopped reading in between because I felt the content was extremely jarring or um, you know uh, abusive to me. So I just I just stopped reading those books. But I'm beginning to understand that there are certain genres that I'm enjoying. Like what? And 
Um, I like reading about the human psyche. I like reading about the human body. And I also like reading some fiction. Um, I, I think stories that have a lot of hope and joy in them, I like reading books like that. So, uh, yeah, these are a few things that I've been doing. And also what I realized during the course of staying here, I'm, I'm not staying at home right now. I'm staying with Adele, who's been so gracious. And, you know, she's, she's had me here for more than a month now. And what I realized during this entire period is that it's, I didn't think it would, I, it just felt like it just happened. I realized today after so long that I'm, I'm comfortable staying with someone else and I don't feel guilty about like being graced with so much of you know space and, and just being so gracious and so um, loving throughout this period I just it's it's so new to me right and I just feel like it, it's been a very smooth transition somehow I don't feel bad about staying in someone else's home um, and, and don't feel like I have to prove myself to them myself to them to um, you know, earn a place in their life. So that has been, it's, it's been revealing, I have to admit. It's been a very nice uh, learning about myself. It feels good. It feels good to know that I've, I've come to a place where I'm okay with receiving. And by receiving, I mean, it can be anything, right? Um, receiving compliments. Are you good with receiving compliments? Are you good with receiving someone just wanting to take you out for, you know, coffee or for lunch for no reason except that they want to spend time with you? Um, these are receiving in small forms. And today, um, Adele and I were talking and she said, you, when somebody compliments you, you say thank you. I didn't realize that was a form of receiving either. So I think when you learn about receiving in small uh, in small areas, it becomes a little easier to expand that more and more. And I think as women, it's important to know the importance no, important to know <laughs> to know that it is important to receive because when we receive, we feel nurtured and it becomes easier for us to be receptive to a lot of things and that's when we do really well, I feel. Um, but then again, each person's experience is different. And um, yeah, you should just see what works for you and, and try including more of that in your life. So, yeah. So, yeah. what have you been doing for uh, this? Yes. Uh, when we live by ourselves and in a comfortable space, we do not have, uh, we, 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 we obviously don't have feedback, so therefore we continue, you know, living exactly the way we are. So uh, the minute I knew we were going to spend uh, the foreseeable future together in the house, I decided to use you as a mirror to see me through your eyes. So obviously it's still just my opinions about me. <laughs> because nobody likes criticism from another person. <laughs> so I decided to see myself through her eyes and there were uh, a few things that I spotted that they're not bad things, but if I improve them, it would just make the world so much nicer for everybody in it. Uh, like for instance, in the morning when I wake up, I just go blank in my head for the most part. And uh, well, since I've been born with a resting bitch face, <laughs> I'm not thinking much, but everybody else is probably thinking that I'm frowning. See, I did not have this insight before Jarna was quarantined in here with me. So I would spend the next couple of hours, couple of hours to three hours with just that resting bitch face till I get my coffee in me and then, you know. Um, and now, and, and 
a couple of days ago I was just talking to her and she said that's fine. I mean, I understand that that's you and it doesn't offend me. But I have the counter argument where how is it going to make the world any less if I were to be more open and if I were to be happier and smile? It is going to make the world better. So the fact that I was able to see myself through her eyes is possible only because she's here. And um, and the fact that I'm willing enough to put the effort in to change my mannerisms a little bit um, comes from my desire to change. So I realize that I'm a very humble student and I'm always trying to evolve, which I've known like for a very, very long time, of course. Uh, so, but this is, I'm, I'm, I'm so uh, trigger happy to change uh, to learn about psychology, to heal my wounds, to do inner psycholo psychological work. Um, but I never thought of myself as somebody who was willing to change her mannerisms, how her, the perception of myself to other people. But when you do that, it just makes life pleasant and pretty. Um, and then I realized that I cannot, cannot live in comfortable clothes, which is yoga pants and oversized t-shirts, indefinitely. And I, I just feel so sad for Jarna that she, because she's got like this limited wardrobe that she is forced to just keep on, right? <laughs> oh my God, I, I swear to God, I dress up every day because I just, I, I just can't. Um, that was something I didn't know before. And uh, so I'm, I, I like dressing up for the day. Um, I've been quite consistent with my yoga practice. I do my uh, without fail meditation once a day. The challenge is to do it twice a day because our Vipassana meditation training has told us that it's really good if we do meditation twice a day. And the kind of meditation I do is usually mindfulness, which is I sit up straight with my spine vertical, close my eyes, make sure I relax my body from my toes up to the top of my head. And then the last place I completely am conscious about relaxing is the place around my eyes and the back of my neck, which is where I hold most of my tension, I feel. And then I start watching my breath. Sometimes I feel my breath on the top of the lip, or sometimes I just feel the expansion and the um, contraction. contraction. <laughs> I lost that word. <laughs> expansion and contraction of my chest. So it depends where I feel my breath. And then, of course, my mind wanders because that's where our mind is supposed to go. Our mind is supposed to keep a 360 degree um, surveillance of our environment, right? So that's how it's designed. So every time my mind goes off in a distance, I gently bring my attention back to my breath. So that's all I do. That's meditation. And I've made a vision board of the things, of, of where I'm headed in my life. And it's pictures I look at every single day. And I feel whatever I feel. None of the feelings is bad or constrictive or low vibration. All the feelings are elevated feelings. Um, and I look at it and I enjoy myself looking at it. And because I have that, I also feel a lot of, I'm able to prioritize my life unconsciously easier. So that's a very, very good um, thing that's happening. I obviously, I've gotten a lot. Um, so I spend about an hour at least in the morning and about an hour in the evening in the garden. Uh, we spend our lunch time together and we have a glass of wine best way to handle the quarantine <laughs> alcohol and then of course I paint oh, which is also in the garden sort of yeah 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 my balcony also is a garden and then uh, we do our individual she does a lot of crafting I've started my last my latest painting is right here I'm very proud of her I've decided to call her Gaia so it's a huge canvas no it's only when we're in the video I can see it's a huge canvas oh my god so uh, hopefully I'll finish it by Sunday. And more than anything else, this particular quarantine, I've concentrated a lot on the full moon and new moon 
times where I do a lot of meditation, I deep clean the house, light to uh, lamps, put a lot of incense, go out into the terrace to meditate under the moon. The moon is about divine feminine energy and it's, I feel that my life being incredibly transformed from the inside out. So this has been one of the most transformative quiet times that I've had and I'm so grateful for the, I, this is not to be little people who are having radically different experiences from us. We are extremely coherent of the fact that we, uh, we, we, we understand our privilege, we do, yeah. and, um, and I'm grateful for it for the first time. I understand the responsibility and the and 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 the and and the need for service that comes before. Whenever I used to do any act of charity, it used to be because I felt guilty for being privileged, or uh, the fear that if I didn't do this charitable work, uh, my privilege will go away somehow. So it was kind of like an insurance. Um, I see how very misplaced my 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 actions and my intentions were. But now this quarantine has taught me the great responsibility that comes with privilege. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping to uncover before the lockdown ends, hopefully, so that when I step into life in future, especially because I'm a doctor, um, how I can operate from a place of privilege, but not in a condescending way, mm -hmm. but to be able to see human beings as one and and, and how I can contribute to make the world a better place. So I feel that not weighing down on me, um, but more like an urge, like this need to make the world a better place. So do you feel anything like that, akin to that? Sometimes. Um, actually, it really depends, right? I, I do want to do things that make the world a better place. I think the profession I've chosen also was because I wanted to be able to spread yeah. yoga to as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess, I mean, it, it's sometimes, I think sometimes, like you said, right, initially our intentions may be not in the right place no, and then we take yes. actions. But I think it's the more you are nicer and kinder to yourself, I think you automatically want to extend that to other people and I think the more you connect with yourself, I know it sounds like a cliche but it's true and that's exactly why it's a cliche, but the more good you do for yourself, you want to do more good for other people. That's just how ah, it is. You're right. That's just how it is. Because I feel like sometimes we're so happy. Have you, have you ever noticed how when we're really, really happy, we're not stingy with wanting to share it with other people? Yeah. But that again goes with pain. If you're in a lot of pain, you inflict pain on other people without realizing. Mm. So it works both ways. And I think the more you work on filling your own cup, it will just automatically. Over. Oh my god, that is amazing to other people. I think that just happens and it feels good to to make that contribution because you feel so good about yourself, right? And then you want to volunteer or you want to help people out or you want to see good things happen for other people when you don't have any uh, any you're not getting anything out of it except that it's making you more happy. So I think, yes, yes, I, I think so. I mean, eventually I hope it will lead us there. Yes. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. What are the secret dumb shit you've been doing during this court? Like something that just... I don't think I don't Okay. <laughs> Lots of dumb shit going on here. I love... Okay. I used to be madly in love with Prince Harry, okay, oh. <laughs> just, I just loved him, and then he got married to Meghan Markle, and I 
kind of felt jealous of her a little bit. And then I grew to love her because my love, Prince Harry, loved her. And now they're a car crash. <laughs> and I can't stop reading the tabloid news oh, about that. that. Yeah. And, and, and watching these behavior, these weird YouTube videos that pop up about these women who sit and analyze a photograph about them and therefore she's like this horrible person who's like ripped Harry from his rightful place in the royal family. I'm obsessed. I, I swear to God. And not that I ever stopped being obsessed with Prince Harry. Like ever. I think even people who don't want to be obsessed will get obsessed at some point because every time you open your browser on your phone, that's the first thing that pops up. What do you yeah, need to yeah, do? Yeah, not yeah. read it? Yeah. So that one. Keeping up with the Kardashians, I, I, you know what? I don't care. I do not <laughs> care what the world says. I appreciate them so much for pumping out content where there is literally no content every week. So if season 18 is on, episode 4 is happening tomorrow. I am so happy. And then I watched another car crash um, reality television series called 90 Day Fiance. Here is the the, the little tiny little synopsis of all the stories. Americans want to marry foreigners. Most of the foreigners fall in love with these Americans to come to America because America is the greatest country in the world. And not so much. And all the, sh all the crap that these Americans put on these foreigners, the foreigners put up with it because they want to go to America and get a green card. And these foreigners have pathologies that mirror the psychosis of the Americans. It is so good. And then, not only do we have 90 Day Fiancé, then we have 90 Day Fiancé Pillow Talk, where the episodes are aired, and the previous season's 90 Day Fiancé, people who are all married and settle down in America and have their green card, will watch this current episode and they'll have reactions. So I watch it all. I have like mad cocaine eyes when I said that. Oh, oh. <laughs> God, but that is so disgusting. Anyway, so no, I do I, that. I, I don't think I've done it. So boring. <laughs> so I'm very vulnerable. Well <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, of course, <coughs> but we've been doing some constructive stuff together. Yes. We are learning belly dancing, babe. I'm just moving my shoulder instead of my... Well, you can't move your belly. We're both so bad at it. <laughs> Half the time, I don't even know where my hands are. <laughs> it's like, but it's fun. And the fact about learning a new skill is whatever you learn yeah. is a step up. It's, it's, it's a step towards learning something because you know like fucking nothing about it, right? And then afterwards, we do this meditation movement meditation thing mm -hmm. standing meditation it's uh, known as qigong it is uh, there are a lot of these videos on youtube for belly dance belly dancing and qigong as well and uh, oh, apparently standing, i didn't mention it was on youtube they probably thought we just learning it by us <laughs> <laughs> no it's all youtube videos they're all free yeah and um, this is apparently one of the most popular ways to meditate in uh, Qigong. But Qigong. it's spelled Q-I-G-O-N-G. Yeah. So we do each of it for about 20 minutes each every day. And we're trying to look up like different videos every few days. So there's a little bit of variety for us and we don't get bored doing the same thing yeah. over a period of time. And that's been nice. And, and I have to admit, I noticed that with both of them, my um, comfort with my body is becoming a little bit more. I'm feeling less inhibited about my body when I'm doing these practices. Um, initially, I think it's, it's just because, you know, you think, okay, I first have to get the steps right and then I will be able to dance. Yeah. It's, like, it's like being afraid of taking your first step. And then you decide you're never going to take that first step. So it shouldn't feel like that. And I think also because, you know, I, I watch you dance salsa and I think, you know, she's, she's an amazing dancer. 
and I feel a little bit inhibited sometimes because I'm like, what if I move like this? And also she stands behind me when we're dancing. So I can't because she says she can't see if she's too far away. So I keep thinking, well, let me stand far away. Yeah, I need my glasses to see. <laughs> I mean, I'm not blind. I, 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 I can see. Yeah. But if it's too far away on video, I have to sort of go close to it. Hmm. But, but because she's standing behind me, I sometimes feel a little weird when I have to do the belly shake thing. But only yesterday I noticed I didn't feel that sense of oh, I'm no. being watched. And I just, I'm not watching you. I'm so sorry. That's okay. okay. I'm not watching you at all. But, but can you imagine we think that other people think more about us than they actually do. Yes. And that's the truth. Even your best friend is not watching you or thinking about you because she's so busy. Wondering where the fuck the booty is because it's not shaken according to the plan. <laughs> but yesterday was the first time I was able to let myself go a little bit and and felt oh, like oh, okay, wonderful. I'm I'm okay with you know letting my body move freely. And I haven't danced in, in in a while, so it's taking me a little bit more time to get comfortable with the fact that I can dance and it's okay. So I think um, I think dancing is one of those forms of art that just helps you lose inhibition and become lets you become more comfortable with your body overall. I think I it agree. does that. Yes. It does that for you. See, this is the this is when we learn a new skill, right? Like um, everything has to do with your body. Like all this, uh, like when you're driving and you decide to go this way, but if you're used to going this way. If your mind is not constantly conscious of you're going this way, you're just automatically going to go the way that your body is programmed to do it. Yes. Yes. So, and I'm so, and I'm always very, very conscious. And uh, a long time ago, my therapist told me, you change your habits, you change your destiny. And I have been very cogent of that. And as a result, I've changed so many of my habits. And if we notice in our life that... Um, the most indisciplined people will never ever really rise up in life and because and as a great devotee of Robert Sharma if we, we need to have a routine we need to have a schedule every single day and these schedules should make sense to us they should be tailor-made that makes sense to us and us alone it doesn't have to be we're not performing for the world and each habit that we've developed, each routine, each schedule, each habit, should be generating something for us, which should be happiness and energy. One of these two. At least if it's generating both for you, ho oh, ho, you're gonna be launched like a rocket. So, so when you wake up, I love to water my plants and just look at them and see how green they are and how beautiful. Not only do I feel myself, my batteries being recharged, I feel happy and I feel purposeful, I feel peaceful and my energy is being recharged. So that's a good habit to have. So now I don't even have to think, I don't, I don't wake up in the morning thinking, hmm, do I have to water my plants today? You know, it's because it's scheduled, it's in my timetable to do it. So that and then taking care of my dogs and then the exercise. So I've got a schedule which works for me. So it is very important for each of us to come up with a schedule that works for us, that generates happiness for us, that generates energy for us. And then afterwards, let's ask ourselves, how are we going to use up that energy? And we need to use up that energy in a constructive way. So it's very good if you do yoga and use up that energy that you've taken, read a good book, have a cup of coffee which just smells so good and then you have it and then use up that energy for having a conversation with somebody that cements your relationship or makes you feel that you get a new idea, talk about the book you read, a podcast that you heard, something that makes you so even the energy that we have that we use up should still be generating energy for us. So only devote your time into activities and only to people who do that for us, right? So which is why I thought um, the belly dancing and the Qigong was uh, Jana's idea. And we decided that we are going to, and when you move your body in accordance with what generates happiness and energy inside of you, new 
neural pathways are established in your body and you no longer live in a state of survival. You're living in a state of thriving, in happiness, in plenty. And we will walk towards a destiny that gives us more of that, you know? And we'll attract people who are more like that with us. And people who are not like that will go away from our lives. So this is a great way. Yes, belly dancing is like, I, I, I don't know why <laughs> it was this difficult. I just thought I was going to wave and I'm just going to be like, hmm, I got that. So no. much like salsa, right? That is not at all thing. <laughs> That's just, oh my god. <laughs> but it's so much fun. It's and I think it's fun also because there are times when we stumble, you you have the ability to laugh at yourself. Yes. It, it, every time we learn something, we're going to look stupid doing it. Yeah. But if you're going to look stupid in the service of learning something, and at the end of it you gain it, gain something, you've got something in the end of it for you, do it. If you're looking stupid just for the heck of looking stupid, if you're being a class clown so that people can laugh at you and in the end you're still feeling lonely, don't do that. Then you need to see a therapist. <laughs> we always talk about a therapist in this, in this channel, don't we? Yes, but do see a therapist. It's always good to see a therapist. Yeah. So always ask yourself, what's in it for me? If you're reading a book, that's why I don't particularly like fiction, so much because I, I I love self help books because in my head I'm thinking well if I'm going to spend my energy reading this what's in it for me right so constantly ask yourself this question what's in it for me in this relationship what's in it for me from this activity and in the end we should be depositing more into crediting more into our account of plenty rather than withdrawing and even if you do withdraw and you give some to another person, watch what they're doing with your energy. Watch what they're doing with the happiness that you've caused them. If they are spending it like for themselves and not making you happy in return, that's a data point you need to work on. Do you want that kind of a draining relationship in your life? Do you want that kind of a draining activity in your life? In the end, how big are we? How expanded are we? This is something that we've got a great amount of time yeah. uh, right now to reflect on. And I hope that everybody, everybody comes out of this lockdown, glowed up spiritually, emotionally, physically, psychologically. So any last words, Jana? No. No, I just... no, I didn't. Last words before you die? Now it's here. So, oh, yes. yeah. so that's a lot of paper. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, I don't flamingo. It's called flamingo. Oh, and this is the fox. This is Mr. Fox. And this um, I call light. I don't think the black portion seems I very visible. So there's one hand from the top and there's one hand from below. So for me this is like a representation of consciousness and, and light in the world, light inside you. So yeah, so these were a few things that I've made. And I think the quarantine is going to be a very fond memory for me. Me too. And I hope it is for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So thank you so much for joining us and if you like this video please follow us and subscribe which I should be, should have been saying at the end of every video but I keep forgetting because I just look at myself in the video and I get lost in myself. Can you think about a worse case of narcissism than this? <laughs> Actually forgetting to ask for you to like and subscribe because I'm so busy staring at myself. You don't get more narcissistic. Anyway. Oh God. I start. Anyway, so if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And please share this video with friends and family. And make us 
YouTube famous. Because we're ready. <laughs> oh, that is so bad. No. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. It's you don't know a lot of, lot of times why you're saying something. <laughs> anyway. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. And we'll meet you in another two weeks' time. Bye. Bye.